Hello everyone and welcome to the Brony Show. Tonight we have a wonderful interview with two fantastic guests. We have Matt Hill. Oh, say hi. Hello. And <laughs> Sam Vincent. Hi! Hello! And they are two very energetic guests that I'm extremely yes. pleased to be with. Wake up, Matt. Huh? Oh, and sorry. there he is. Yeah. He's sleeping <laughs> on me. Come on. Wake yeah, up yeah. here. Oh, I was just getting my energy up there. Sorry about yeah, that. No, power hey. nap. I feel you. Oh, yeah. I was like, sorry, knuckle up. So, how are you both doing tonight? Well, good. good. Uh, it's uh, currently it's... about 1.30 in the afternoon on the Pacific Coast here. We're in Vancouver, British Columbia. 10 degrees Celsius. And for yeah. our American friends, that's about 56. <laughs> yeah. well, that's right, because right, oh, yeah. we... Stupid yeah. Fahrenheit. My professor told me to stop that. Yeah. I yeah. drove here at 80 kilometers an hour. That's yeah. 50 for our American friends. Yeah. There it is. That's good. Very uh, good. Making, making fun We're of Americans go already. We got Fox this. Game tonight. Oh, what, what teams? I, don't know. I was going to say, are they ready for our, our metric system? Oh, yeah. Are, are you ready for material? it? Oh, boy. The metric. Right. Okay. Go. All right, Connor. We are going to give this to you, man, because I'm sure it's probably frustrating for you. Matt, you know? I just want to let you know, uh, Matt suffers from ADD. I do not. I do. And, what's that? Ooh, sparkly yeah, yeah, label. So I'm just letting you know. This is, this is what you're into. Wow, that's good. Hey, buddy. How's yeah, it going? So. What's going on? Ooh, did you see that over there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Be serious. Right. I'm totally serious. Okay. Okay. Yeah, serious? All right. So, I know you guys just came in from another interview. How did that go? Good. Not yes. as great as this one's going to go, though. Oh, you yeah. know it. Yeah. 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 Only totally the yeah. best here. Yeah. Sam told me to say that. <laughs> well, fine. Said, I appreciate it. That's right. He said, Matt, whatever you do, make sure that, like, the next person that we talk to really feels like theirs is the better one than the other one that we just did. So that's far, it's working. How's it going? Uh, no, make, is it so working? Make, yeah. make me feel good, and we'll have a great interview all around. Yes, man. You bet. You're awesome. So... so so why don't we get right into it then? Yeah. Uh, the first question that I have for you is, I want to start it from the beginning. How did you guys get into the voice acting industry? Uh, Matt, why don't you start with start us start us off here? Um, well, yes, I am the more senior of the two of us, you see, because you know Sam's birthday fell like ten years later than mine, so I guess it's appropriate that I start first. Um, thanks for that, Connor. Uh, but uh, my first, uh, well, I mean, I guess my my light bulb moment was like way, 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 way back in the day, you know, when I saw people performing on the old television. Uh, but then, like, the, you know, when I first started uh, voice acting um, was uh, I got a gig right out of high school. Actually, no, sorry, I was still going to high school. I was like 15. Wow. And, um, yeah, I was on a, one of the last live broadcasted radio shows that they did up here in Vancouver for our national um, broadcaster um, called CBC. And, uh, and it, like, as they say, it kind of like blew the doors wide open of, you know, one for me, like performing live, um, you know, for, for doing like a voice gig was phenomenal. Um, but then also then being invited into all the different studios, um, you know, to start doing, you know, commercials for, for the radio. And then a couple of years later, I got my first big break for, um, uh, animation, and that was to be playing Kevin on uh, Saturday morning cartoons for um, Captain Nintendo, the Game Master. Wow! Wow! Yeah, it's an old show. Oh yeah! Oh my goodness! I re <laughs> like I, I remember that. That was I, I caught the tail end of that. I'm seventy six. You oh, know? Oh no, that's. <laughs> oh yeah, son. Now, you are not old enough to be talking like that. Not to me yet. I'll be like I'll be like eighty. Everybody makes fun of me here. They're like I'll be eighty five and still running and going like, dude, dude, come on, man, dude. There's so. nothing wrong with that. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing at all. So then, uh, Sam, how did you enter the field? Um, with my tractor. No. Oh yeah. No. Um. I basically started uh, acting professionally in high school and. I was doing mostly on-camera work, and then I got an audition for a animated series, which was a Japanese series that they wanted to dub into English. It was called Dragon Warrior. Uh, I went and auditioned. I got the parts. That was my first voice 
uh, gig ever, and it was quite cool because I didn't even know you could do animation in Vancouver, but it was just starting to happen. Uh, that was probably around 1990 or something like that. And then um, I was... My first prelay series was Bucky O'Hare and the Toad Wars. I played AFC Blinky. Um, and that was my first, yeah, regular animated series. And I just started doing more and more work after that. I was still doing mostly... I was kind of balancing the two on camera and voice. But slowly but surely... I started to do more and more voice work, and I decided that's where I wanted to put my focus in voice, and I've been doing that for well, over 20, know, 20, 20 years, years now. now. Yeah, yeah, I, sure. I need to stop laughing at the at the old man jokes. Yeah, like, no, I, I, yeah, yeah. I I'm not sure if I should feel bad for laughing at them, but no, I don't want to no, laugh. No, it's still bad. You know, you remember on um, did it's you, fun to laugh at old people. Did you ever watch the Muppet Show? Of course. Okay, well, you remember those two guys in the box? Mm-hmm. You know, those yeah. like, who, Hey, yeah. what you doing there? That's, that's me and Sam. Yeah, you know, that's exactly. sick. That's it's right. like, oh, those guys are great. Oh, well, they're not that great. Yeah, boo! Boo! You know, but from me and Sam, you just hear this. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sammy. Uh, <laughs> imagine is... Ed, Ed and Eddie. Remember, imagine Single D and Double D, like, 80 being Eddie now. Yeah, yeah. that would be interesting. That was weird. We did that, though. Oh, yeah, we did. That's yeah, right. We did. We did. I sounded the same. No, we did. We did Spe- them as old people. Speaking of that, and Eddie, uh, where's, what's Mr. Sampson up to these days? Do you have any idea? Well, in true Eddie fashion, he, um, he left the building officially. He left the biz and uh, took his, um, his young family uh, way, way, way north of here uh, into a little town called uh, Fort McMurray which is kind of the epicenter for all things um, oil and gas development in Canada. And uh, I just actually talked to him on Facebook about, I don't know, maybe a month ago. And uh, he's got two kids now, super, super happy, um, basically runs his own operation up there. He started oh, wow. as kind of like one of the big bucket operators. And uh, as he said, he's like, yep, going to run the whole show now. So he's, he's actually doing really well. You've got to wonder if his time spent on Ed Ed Nettie had any influence into that. Oh, it absolutely did. Not at all. <laughs> it absolutely did. <laughs> he he was Eddie man. We drove <laughs> we drove Tony into a new industry. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Petroleum. Well, Sam used to just poke him all the time, going, "Eh, Nessie, eh, yeah. Nessie." You know, and Tony would just freak out, and I'm so absolutely. Yeah. You know, uh, I thought he was. I thought Sammy was going to drive Tony to a felony, but you know, <laughs> thank. No, no, never happened. Never happened. Good. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. The little jumpy thing there. Yeah, that just means I have email. Uh, Don't worry about it. Sammy's pretty popular. He's got mail. Yeah. All right. So now getting back. Now you guys, as you said, you've been doing the vocal game for a very long time now, and as such, I would imagine that you've been through dozens of characters. How do you go about creating uh, the voices for these characters? You know, you see obviously you see a part, and you you want a voice for it, but how do you get the hold of some of them? Uh, Sam, why don't you start us off here? How do I get my head around the voices? Well, um, sometimes it helps to have a picture of them and you get an idea, you know, their age, whether or not they're human or animal. or uh, Like if I was a picture. Oh, right now? I yeah. Get- Hey, look at me. I am Matt Hill. <laughs> See, look at that. Hey, no, hey Matt hey, Hill. no picture. Can't do it. See, see, it's, I mean, it's crazy. No, um, inspiration. It all, it all depends. Yeah. I mean, you know, usually you you try and figure out what part of the voice you want to use. Whether there's if it's a high character or if it's a low character, if it's a bad guy, a good guy. Um, do they have an accent? Is he from? Yeah, there's, uh, and then you just experiment yeah. a lot. You just try and find the, you know, try and the find a voice, music. and you want to try and. Find something that's funny as well. Yeah. Try and be funny. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's always experimentation. It's always playing around with your voice and uh, practicing different things. And sometimes you find something that you think is funny that it, it might work out for a certain character you're auditioning for. And you try it out. Yep. And sometimes you succeed and sometimes you don't. Yep. Now, you know. But you, Matt, what, what's your okay, process? Matt. Mine's kind of like the Wright brothers, you know, when they were trying to build that first plane, you know, kind of like Sammy. It's like, wow, I got this great idea. You know, you put wings on it, you put a seed in it, you know, you push it down the field, 
sometimes it gains air and it takes off. Sometimes it crashes and burns really quickly. You know, it's, uh, um, you know, it's a, it's a, I don't know. It's a, it's an interesting, fun process actually, you know, especially the more we get into it, it's like, cause it could be really easy to maybe just fall into, I don't know, doing like, let's say one voice, you know, like, like, um, I mean, I, I get hired a lot for playing a lot of different variations on sort of like what my own natural voice sounds like. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me to be able to branch out and do different characters was a great way um, to be able to sort of stretch those vocal muscles, right? In order to, yeah. you know, get, break new territory, you know, because I can't do like, you know, Sam goes, you know, does a really low voice or whatever. It just makes me cough. I can't do that stuff like that. Right, so I have to, you know, expand in the areas of my voice that, you know, I can still, you know, make it sustainable because you have to make sure that you're, you know, you can do this character for longer than sort of like thirty seconds. Um, you know, you may have to sustain this thing for four hours at a time, show after show after show, right? So, you know, um, it's a, it's yeah, it's a craft, man. So a lot of it is trial and error and like discovering your range. It seems. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Now, has this process, has the process that you used to find these voices changed since you began uh, voice acting? Have you like developed uh, your own kind of ways of finding these voices as opposed to when you started it? Because it sounds like you guys just you fell into it. You got some great opportunities, and it really expanded from there. Did you always know what your range was with this? No, no. no I think when you're, you know, I like I say, I started off when yeah. I was uh, young and. I, I used to just focus on the things that I was good at at that time. Like I used to do the like the high pitched kind of alfy characters up high, you know, like the, the, the typical double D range characters. Those are the ones that I used to focus on because I already knew I could do that, and I would f focus on those. And as I gained more confidence, I would try other things. And and yeah, it's really it's really about you 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 gain more confidence and experience as you go along, and you you improve upon your method for finding voices and. And also, it's also about gaining the trust of the people who make these uh, shows that they start to believe, you know, believe that you, you know, you're always trying to prove yourself, you know, you're always trying to prove that you can do something because people see you doing one thing and they think that's all you can do. And then you got to kind of show them that you can do more things. And as you do that, you get something that's different, that's new, and you gain confidence in that area. And it kind of, you build, yeah, you build, new, you build up yeah. your repertoire Very true. as as you go through yeah. your career and you gain more confidence in your abilities. And it's kind of like this gradual process. It's almost like any, you know, anything that you would learn to do, you know, if you're learning to play the piano or whatever it is, the, the more experience you get, the more you know, the greater your repertoire of songs you could build or whatever it is. So, yeah, it's like, a, yeah. it's it's an, it's an ongoing process and you keep doing that even, you know, at, now you still, you know, I'm still continuing to do that to this day where you're always trying to add something new to the, uh, you know, to the toolkit, so to speak. Mm -hmm. That being said, though, that, that begs the question, have you ever had a director uh, for, an, for animation who has called you on for a specific voice that you've done in the past? Um, yeah, actually, just recently, um, did a, a, a pilot, um, for a show, uh, called Super Duper Noobs, and, um, it's Super Noobs, I, yeah, they changed it, did um, they? yeah, Super Duper Noobs, yeah, um, okay. but then, uh, <laughs> um, you know, quite specifically, the, the creator of it, um, called, well, you got called in as well, Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, they, they wanted, um, if they could have got him, they wanted Tony to come in as well. Cause he, he really liked the spontaneity and all the character development and all the quirkiness that we did in Ed, Ed and Eddie. And so I know he was very, even though they weren't, obviously they didn't want us to come in and do those characters, but they knew that we were really, really used to kind of working in that way. And, uh, so that was the first time for me that I'd been sort of brought back for something that in this case, the director was like, Oh my God, I loved you in that show. You know, so come on, let's play. You know what I mean? Um, usually it's like what Sam says. We, it's usually, it's it's a new deal basically, you know, on every show. But we bring our toolkit of characters that we feel, you know, that are kind of like, what, if this makes sense, like our pocket characters. Mm -hmm. You know, that we know, okay, I can do this character and I can put this little spin on them. I can, you know, I can put this affectation. I can pull it off. 
Um, and then it's always this cool balance of, of like that, do, being really solid in what you already know that you can do, but then bringing in new arsenal when you get a new, when you get an opportunity to, because then it just totally opens up a new, you know, arena of um, confidence. I, I think, you know, starting within yourself, but then also with the people who hire you, you know, big time. I really, I really love this. I'm, I'm hearing all of the experience in this field from you two. I've... I've interviewed uh, a couple of voice actors, though none who are in the actual professional field. So hearing this, hearing this, this real experience of it is this is a fantastic interview already. This is very, this is an exciting uh, series of answers already. I think he likes us. <laughs> <laughs> although, although what I found, what I did find funny was uh, when you were talking about a, a director who was like, "I love doing that show." I think it's I, it's a little funny to me that uh, directors would. Just I don't know, I, like enjoy another um, a show that's not going to be theirs, and call someone on because they just loved that show. Yeah, it, it's yeah. funny for me. To, it's funny to hear. Yeah. So, awesome. so um, just uh, moving on now. Do you record at home or in a studio typically? Oh, in the in this like for for all the shows that you've known Sam and I to be part of. That's all done in a like a professional studio setting. Oh, studio. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know whether the you know we've had all types of situations where you know the director you know might be on Skype or might be you know phone patched in from another you know city um, if they can't be in the session. But you know a lot of the time um, you know for, especially for prelay stuff like Ed, Ed and Eddie and you know any of this other stuff was you know most or all of the cast would be together um, you know to to put it all together. It's just in anime, um, when we go into the studio um, just by ourselves and record our part, and then the next person comes in and records their part, and then they put it together after that. Makes sense. That's simple enough. So have you have you ever uh, done any recordings at home? But it's it's all studio. Yeah. No, I do stuff. I've got a setup at home um, because I also work with an agency in the States. Um, so I send all my stuff... And, via um you know the world wide web and uh um, so, yeah so it's kind of cool to be able to do stuff like that um i mean i've done done a few sessions um for gigs through that studio but again it's still it's just still better unless you unless you specifically set up your own sort of home studio which you know some of our compadres that we've worked with um you know they do a ton of radio you know stuff that they've done from their own studio for years um, you know, but they also, the same thing, they still go into the studio to do like animation and, you know, all sort of stuff like that part of the industry is, is still, you know, it's the group setting that just totally, everyone feeds off each other, right? There's a couple you know? of scenarios where there's, uh, in Vancouver, oh, where right, there's, My there's, Little Pony, right? Like, well, there's certain like shows like, uh, well, My Little Pony is one example where the majority of the cast is in Vancouver, but there's a couple of uh, actors who are based out of L.A., and they record their material separately. And there's other examples like Johnny Test, uh, oh, where right. the cast, one of the actors on uh, Johnny Test, is actually patched in with the rest of the cast up in Vancouver, and they all do it simultaneously at the same time. At the same time. Yeah. That's really cool. so, That's interesting. so, you know, there's sometimes the technical aspect of making sure that uh, the sound quality and the recording quality that's coming from one individual in another city and the rest of the cast is seamless so you don't get any differences uh, in the way it's like in post the way it sounds so you, everything can be like integrated seamlessly and it doesn't sound like one's different than the other so but you know they managed to do that so that leads me to ask uh, about the scripting do you get to hear what the other VAs uh, have been working on while they're working on the same project, so you get a feel of how that character is supposed to, you know, sound or respond, or is it all just based on script? Uh, well, if you're talking about prelay, where most of the time we're all in the studio together mm -hmm. recording that the show, so we know what everybody's sounding like because they're in front of us doing it, but in terms of if we're doing, say, anime and we're dubbing individually, sometimes you'll hear the other characters speaking a lot of times i worked on anime shows and i didn't know yeah what the what other characters sound were, like especially yeah. if you're because usually you do the actors one by one if you're the first person to go in for that episode you don't have any there's you're not hearing any of the other characters yeah. you just it's just you going in so sometimes you're not aware of what the, what the other like. people sound like <clears throat> but uh absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. 
Now, have you done a lot of anime, or is it generally just, uh, you know, local uh, cartoons? Uh, well, the thing is, is that in Vancouver, uh, it, it's interesting. It's a, in Vancouver, it's a real mix of different things uh, going on right now in the city. Basically, uh, over the year, over the years, Vancouver was a uh, an industry that was providing content for American companies. Like you would have um, a lot of companies that are American based coming here and getting the Canadian voice actors to do the voices. But now we have like you know Mattel and Hasbro still come up here to voice get the voices for shows like My Little Pony. Uh, Max Steel, Barbie, these things. Mm -hmm. But there's also companies, local companies now, one in particular, Nerdcore, which uh, Maddie and I have worked with over the years. And uh, they're producing their own content, their own intellectual properties with shows like, um, well, show that we did back in the day, Stormhawks. Mm -hmm. Currently, they're doing a show called Slug Terra, another uh, property called can you talk about Kate Mim? Yeah, Kate, yeah, Kate, Kate, Kate Mim. 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 Yeah, um, I actually just won the the award at the at um, Mip Kids um, for uh, basically like the the top show of the new lineup to watch mm -hmm. around the world. So it's like, yeah, they're lighting it up. Nerdcore, especially, it's like Nerdcore is a Nerdcore is a they're just on fire. They're they're they've they're awesome. been around for a while, but they're yeah. they're they're really burgeoning. Vancouver. Ace Fipke. Woo! Ace Fipke, who, uh, yeah. and, uh, and Chuck there are yeah. creating some really cool shows. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, but they also will do stuff for, like, I, you know, mentioned Mattel and stuff. They'll also do stuff yeah. for them as well. Yeah. So, and then DHX Media up here, uh, which used to be Studio B, uh, they're producing content, but it's a mix of American stuff as well as original content. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so and and anime anime is kind of we're not doing as much anime with the uh, with the yeah. demise of Bandai. Yeah. There's less yeah. anime coming into Vancouver now. So yeah, but over the years it's been a mix of everything. Yeah. Uh, do you find that you've preferred to do voiceovers for anime or the domestic cartoons? Well, just from a financial perspective, uh, as a voice performer, you're going to get paid much better to do original stuff, not yeah. the dubbing. Dubbing doesn't pay that well um, in, you know, in comparison to doing work for prelay series. And I would think um, that dub you know, the dubbing would be a lot harder. And well, that's that's the yeah. iron that's the it's, irony of it. It's like it, it painting is, a fence and you know, is, on a hot sunny yeah, day. <laughs> it's, it's more difficult. It's more challenging yeah. to actually do, but you don't get paid as much. Um, I that's mean, there's second. some. I've enjoyed the anime stuff that I've worked on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had, yeah, I've, me too. I've, and I've got a lot of great fan feedback from people who, you know, enjoyed, you know, particularly for me, the Gundam Seed series and other things like that, that Matt and I both have been on, uh, that we dubbed, and uh, it's been fun meeting the fans of that, but <laughs> I'm always excited about the new stuff I'm working on, the original content that we're, we're making up here. That's the stuff that I'm, you know, excited about at the moment, anyway. I'm sure everyone can't wait to see it. That's that's why we're here. We want to hear what you guys are working on, what you guys have worked on. And speaking of both of you, however, uh, I you guys seem to be really good friends, which is which is wonderful to see. It's it's a dick. he's just gonna yeah. <laughs> he, he can see you do that, you know. I know. I'm just gonna work on that. That's better like yeah, yeah. Dyslexic yeah. Fighter. Ah, right. We're friends. Whatever. Yeah. I'm trying to convince him to let me and my gal get married at his house, too. <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. You'd think that your friend would say, like, you know, no problem. You just have it here. But he goes, no, no you're not having your friends over here. No. Forget no. it. No. Yeah, I don't know but... how I'd respond to that either, but... <laughs> but get... <clears throat> so, getting back. Now, when did you two first meet in person? Have, like, have you been friends since before... The voice acting gig, or was that well, the industry that got you together? I opened up my mail one day, and there was a message from Sam, and it said, "You got mail." And it was, oh, sorry, that was a movie, right? No. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, no. We got, yeah, I don't know. How do we? Well, we just we like, we, 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 we just talked about that. We our first. How do we become friends? Our first, um, our first gig together in terms of animation was on the show called Dino Babies. Dino Babies. Um, Dino 
And we were talking about that. The cast, the yep. cast, you can actually find them on YouTube now. Uh, basically, we had Andrea Libman, who plays Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy, uh, in mm-hmm. it. And uh, mm-hmm. she, she was a young, precocious nine-year-old mm-hmm. at the time. Um, Scotty McNeil was on there. Uh, Kathleen Barr, who plays the great the Trixie mm-hmm. uh, on um, MLP. Yep. Um, and so we had a great, yeah. we had a solid cast on you that me. show. Yeah, very And was uh, awesome. that was our first time that we, yep. we weren't pretty necessarily yep. buddies at that time, though. I don't, I don't think it was until. I didn't even like him. Yeah, couldn't stand him. Um, but it wasn't until oh. Ed, Ed and Eddie that I think we started to hang yeah. out more and yep. be pally pals. Yep. We would go and we would have coffee and um, buttered toast after yep. our sessions. And, and it was lovely. And I would I would help Matt yep. with all his girl problems. Yep, you know, always. He had lots yep. of them. I would be like, oh, Sammy. Yeah. Oh, He's like, well, yeah. what, what do I do about this restraining order? I said, <laughs> Matt. What is this restraining order? Five, 500 <laughs> meters, because it's metric. 500 right. meters from any, 500 any of these. you got to stay away from them, okay? Yeah. Whoa, whoa, meters. You're confusing my American mind. <laughs> I know, I know. 500, we'll go yards. Meter, okay, 500 meter, yards. Meter. Oh, uh, y- no, I understand yards, like 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 yeah, football, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So a whole football field away, I think is what he's trying to say. Yeah. You know, you need to be yeah, a, that absolutely. that distance away from these women times two. So, <laughs> it's good. Oh yeah. yeah, Sammy's like my, you know, he's like my, you know, there's a there was this, it's like you know. Uh, Paul I'm like your, and John Lennon. Oh, you know what I mean? Like your your you know, your Lebanese adopted he is. He's brother. He's like my Lebanese slash Vietnamese slash Jewish slash <laughs> Catholic. Eh, sure, why not? Whatever. You know, and I'm just like the Anglo white guy with Irish and Scottish and Jamaican man. In yeah, it, right. You know. But yeah, yeah. anyway, yeah. Well, yeah, we're friends. Yeah, we know. We've been through while. stuff. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's I'm good. Glad here is it's. It, it seems to be going well, and it's making for one hell of an interview. So. Yeah, but I'm big. Oh yes, I won't want to say that to a New Yorker. But I'm big. But big. If you will get punched depending on what region of New York you're in. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. But I think, but I, I think it's worth the punch for the experience. Yeah, it's like, hey, yo, yo. Yeah, but I'll get a butt in. Yeah. yeah how's but, that? How's that? How's but that? it's an internet punch, so it doesn't hurt. Yeah, it doesn't hurt. It's it's just yeah. No, it's good. It's if good. you can find Vancouver on a map and come find us, we're all, we're all <laughs> yeah, about that. That's good. right. That's right. Come find us. Come man. get us. Come we'll get us. A little Chinatown. Yeah, come get us. Yeah. All right. All right. So now. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's 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 fine. I like you said. We like to laugh. We like to have fun. So yeah. you've talked a lot about uh, the interaction that you have with other voice actors uh, in you know during projects and in the studio. Have you guys ever learned from each other or the other voice actors around you, maybe about the roles that you're currently wanting to fill or just vocal work in general? Oh, God, no. Uh, you mean learn or like what's coming up, what's available, uh, or just about the actual thing learning. about voice acting? Yeah. Uh, pretty much about voice acting itself. Oh, yeah. We learn from each other. Absolutely, man. Like, we, you know, you kind of, it's like, we always, people who aren't in the business if they come and they stand in a room with a whole bunch of voice actors that have just been sort of, you know, commiserating and hanging out. Everybody is one-upping each other on their voices. Everybody's ended up doing the same voice that someone else is doing. So it's always this constant, like, I don't know, this constant dialogue of, like, different voices happening. And, you know, I've, 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 I've had people along with me that, say, aren't in this industry. And, you know, they walk away afterwards going, like, whoa. That's a whole hell of a lot of talent, man. That you know, a lot of energy everybody's putting out there. So I mean, I don't know. It's like you know, I mean, we we steal like, from each other. We That's always, we yeah, yeah. We, we politely borrow and then yeah, we give it back. Borrow. Yeah, yeah, I take Sam's vocal cords and yeah. put them, you know, put them in my. But you know, we learn from each other for sure. Definitely. Yeah, there are certain people that excel at certain types of things, and yeah. you're always in admiration of what they do. And like, everything I do, Sam, is in complete I'm ad- in, I'm abomination in complete, of it. I'm in complete... Admiration? Complete awe, awe. of Matty. He is in shock and um, awe. Shock and awe. Shock and awe of Matty. <laughs> shock and awe of but, Matty. You know, we, we, yeah, we watch others, yeah. and we learn from them, and hopefully they learn something from us, and yeah. blah, 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 and it's uh, it's been fun. But we've been doing, like I said, we've been doing this, we've been working with a group of people in this city for 20 years at least. 
Yep. So there's a lot of history here, with, uh, and there's a great kind of camaraderie between the voice performers in Vancouver. Uh, and it, I think it's unique. It's even unique to what's going on, you know, in L.A. and things like that. I mean, there, obviously everybody down there knows one another too, but up here in particular, we're a smaller group, and we've been together for a very long time. And, and we've done a lot of shows together. We've done a lot of shows, shows together. So yeah. there's, there's definitely yeah. a... It's like a tight-knit little community of people up here. Mm-hmm. I believe it's it's American American groups tend to be together, but not so talkative when they don't need to be. It's kind of a shame. So it's it's really cool to know that there's so much well, like you said, camaraderie between uh, all of you up there. So that uh, Christmas parties are phenomenal. Yeah, we love the Christmas. <laughs> phenomenal. Uh, I there I have yet to see a bad Christmas party. I dread the day when I find one. That's true. That's true. So now getting back, you. Like you said, you've talked about uh, a lot of the people that you are just just in awe of or that you've known for a very long time. And now, if I have my information right, I believed uh, Tap of the St. Germain voiced Naz in Season 1 of Ed, Ed and Eddie. Uh, That's right. That's he was right. in there, and then it switched yeah. over to uh, Aaron Fitzgerald. Aaron, that's right. Yes. Yep. yep. You're correct. So, ha- so that being said, uh, have... Do you guys have any like notable experiences with working with her as opposed to uh, how it is today or how it has been today for MLP? Well, <laughs> Tabitha, is, Tabitha is probably one of the most she, unique individuals that you will ever meet. She brings cookies and cake. Yeah, she, she's, she's our cookie, I she's our love cookie queen. Her. She brings yeah. in the goodies every uh, every time you work with her. I want to marry her. Best yeah. kind of coworker. She's yeah, awesome, she brings yeah. in the goodies. Yep. She's mega, mega, mega talented. She's mega. Actually, um, I'll even put more megas on that. She's like times twenty infinity. Yeah. Mega. And she's on everything, man. Yeah, she just. I'm working on what? I'm working on Kate and Minion with her right now. Mm-hmm. You're working on probably every other show that you're on probably with her. I'm working with her on a couple shows. Yeah. yeah. I'm on MLP with her when I'm when my character's on. Well, you must but, too. Yeah, when your character's on. Yeah, she's great, yeah. and she's got a she's got a really great she's range. So cool, man. Uh, she's able to play teenage girl all the way to little bitty lady. Yeah, and she does great accents. Yeah, and she just she's and she's funny as heck. Yeah. So can you say heck on TV? Yeah, you can say heck. Yeah. Absolutely. Heck, she's she's so, uh, funny. Yeah. More so or less yeah. her and we're a uh, fairly uncensored program, at least in the way of language. Yeah. So if, Feel, like, feel free. We're not we're, we're not gonna yeah, go we're, crazy on you. <laughs> yeah, he was about to show his nipple. That's okay. Oh, no. not that's nothing. That's not yeah. okay. We'll, we'll be fine. Too much. It's good. Pub- yeah. <laughs> a little too much. Good publicity, though. you I'm, I'm sure we have a few people like, that'd be overwhelmed and happy. But yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. No, I mean, you know, and again, I think it it goes back to that sense of of friendship, and it's true friendship and camaraderie that we have with each other, because we've all kind of grown up with one another in, in a way, you know, and not only with our careers, but literally in numbers of ages, right? We got a lot of hours invested hanging out with each other, you know? Um, you know, mm-hmm. we've, we've celebrated lots of stuff, you know, and lots of milestones, and, um, you know, there's, it, it can't help but rub off, you know, and I, I think Sam's bang on. It's like, it's a really, we're very, very blessed to have the community makes it even more special is for the most part everybody I think really realizes that. So nobody takes that for granted. At least I don't feel like people do. You know what I mean? It's yeah. you can you can tell people genuinely are stoked to to get to do what we get to do together. You know? Absolutely. And I'll still do a backflip when I get apart, you know, and then, you know, when we get to go in and, and, and work with all these people that, you know, that I love a lot. Um, you know, it's uh it's a it's a cool thing, man. It's a great way to earn a living and have a great life. Hey, Hold on, I'm going to go something you should have fun. <laughs> I'm going to cry. Oh, no. no. You'll, be, you'll be pleased to hear yep. that Tabitha the Cookie Queen is already being tweeted. Oh, of course. Oh, you been no. tweeted? <laughs> uh, already, see, everybody knows about Whoa. it. It's, it's, like it's, 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 it's been started. It's, it's a thing. I'm sure it's yeah. going to hit her soon enough, too. Oh, I'm yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. <laughs> She'll hit us back up. Listen, Sammy Twit's been going tweety all over him. Yeah, She's probably tweeting him right now. I doubt it. Going like, 
Yeah. Let's talk about her green juice. <laughs> her green juice. She, she also makes... Oh, yeah. She also brings in all sorts of strange all concoctions sorts. into the studio in mason she jars. A, yeah, she's got a stew. She has a blender that she puts all sorts of yeah. beautiful, healthy concoctions. She has to go to the bathroom about ten times for <laughs> the friggin' yeah. session. All but, she's like, Whoop! That's okay. Gotta drop the gold off. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, oh, yeah. all right. As much as we love Tabitha, we want to keep it on you guys. We love you guys. And at the moment, we'll we'll love her more when we have her on, but we love you guys more because you're currently on. We'll... No, it's okay. She's just going to have to talk about us a lot. Yeah. <laughs> there you we go. Have... We'll even it out. We'll, That's this thing we'll we put have. On a, we'll put on a whole, a whole section for her about okay. you guys. Okay, good. All right. All right. Now, uh, for the moment, I want to get into... You guys, as individuals, I'm going to start asking a few questions that are a little more personalized. I'm just going to start with Matt for a moment. All right, so... Yeah, uh, you, sure. Yeah, Matt. yeah. <laughs> now, Matt, you've done a lot of really interesting roles, but some of the most notable of them, for some reason, always have to do with a character being in love with some... For, with some specific food, Ed has this profound love for buttered toast. Soren yeah. has this great appetite yeah. for apple pie, which Absolutely. has become a strange thing concerning. You uh, saved my Swedish pie. Dub. Yeah, the oh, yeah. Swedish dub has has grown strange things having to do with that. So, yeah. what do you just fall into these roles, or do you seem, or do you just purposely take these roles with these characters who are somewhat food crazed? Dude, I have like you know, I have a, a, a large affection for um, gastronomic gourmet delights. I love to eat. I eat. Uh, I probably eat about four thousand calories a day because you know I do a lot of running. He runs um, a lot. If I if I didn't run as much as I did, I'd probably be about six hundred pounds, and I'd have my own reality show. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, luckily for me, I get to work it off, and and. Uh, but yeah, I know it is actually kind of funny. My my characters either have like sort of like you know quasi learning assistance type issues, um, <laughs> or like I you know what I mean. They either have dyslexia, autism, um, or ADHD. Uh, ADHD, or they're just like Ed, which is kind of a combination of all of them, you know. Yeah. Um, but at the heart of them, they all have big hearts, and so uh, you know, I think in a small way, a reflection of me. As a human being, you know, it's, I, uh, I think you're brighter than Ed, though. Let's let's give you that credit at least. Ah, uh, Ed is quite a wise one, you know. He's quite wise. Well, he's yeah, wise like himself. apparently when he loses his pants, that's when he's wise. Exactly. Yeah. I want if, if when it, when the zombie apocalypse comes, I want Ed on my side. <laughs> I feel you. Yeah. yeah, he would be prepared. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, man. Yeah. He totally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know it's good though. It's good. I love food. Food, good. Yep. I'm absolutely. Down. I, absolutely. All right. Now, um, let's touch on some of the ML on some of the MLP stuff. I I like to make it as generalized as I can, but it's the Brony Show. I definitely have to touch on the pony. Now, Sam, it. I'm gonna <laughs> throw this question to you. How did you end okay. up working on the MLP set? How did they? How did that begin? Well, like all my roles begin, it begins with an audition, and uh, I got a call from my agent who said that there was a guest spot on My Little Pony, and at this point, I wasn't aware of how big My Little Pony was, like the the fan following. I was just like, oh, it's just, you know, for me, it was like just another show. I didn't quite grasp the phenomenon that it had become with the bronies and all that stuff, so I went, okay, so... The thing that interested me about it was the fact that there was going to be a song involved and I was given uh, a track to listen to and to practice singing a bit of it and that to watch The Music Man because that was basically the song was the Super Speedy Center Squeezy 6000 was an homage to that particular uh, musical. So I watched uh, You Got Trouble, um, the song that it was kind of loosely based on. So I, I, I basically went into audition. Uh, at this point, I wasn't sure it was Flim or Flam. I didn't know who I was going to be doing. Mm -hmm. So I, I just read, I think maybe I read for both of them. I have no idea at this point. I can't remember. But basically, I sang a bit of the song, uh, did some of the dialogue, and then I heard that I got the part of Flim, and Scott McNeil was Flam, and we went in together and we recorded the, uh, the song together. We recorded the song first, 
And basically, we did, we did, like people think, cause anybody who's heard the song goes, wow, that's a song that's really long, it's fast. Did you record that song all at once? And I'll say to people who don't already know this, but we recorded it in chunks, so it's not like I had to sing the whole song from beginning to end. We took it piece by piece. And then after that was done, we went and recorded the dialogue for the episode with the rest of the cast. And then finally, when it finally aired, I watched it not on Hub, but I watched it on YouTube. And I was very pleased with the final product, very proud of it. And I showed it to as many people as I could. And then at that point, I was aware of how popular My Little Pony was. And that particular episode had some, a lot of people were very uh, fans of that particular episode. So I managed to get on board the whole convention train. And I was able to do, uh, I've, been, I've been to about three My Little Pony conventions. I'm going to be going to a couple more. And it's been great. It's just been great to be a part of that whole show. A quick, give them something to give them something to hope for. Which convention are you looking at? Um, I'm going to be at uh, Animation Celebration in Dallas, Texas, at the end of with with Matt Hill. Matt's going to be appearing there as well. Um, at, that's at the end of March. Animation Celebration in Dallas, Texas, uh, and then in July for the July Fourth weekend. Hopefully. Uh, Maddie and I will again be appearing in Galveston Island, which is in south of Houston, Texas, for another animation celebration uh, convention. So Texas seems to be the place I'm going to be going to next, more yeah, you're, recently. So. You're making one of my co-hosts happy. He he lives yeah. right in the heart of Texas. Oh, good. Yeah, well, we, I've already been to... I was in Austin recently and uh, Houston yep. last year. So, yeah, Texas. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's great. There we go. Uh, sorry, it dropped for like half a second. Stupid thing. Um, yep, yeah, all right. So you heard him. You heard him, everyone. See Sam and Matt in, te in Texas in March and July. Yep. Make mm -hmm. sure you don't miss it. Uh, yeah. Welcome back, welcome back Matt. Did you go running? Yeah, sorry. I had to, uh, I had to run out to my car. No problem, no problem. Now, now, Matt, I'm going to return the same question to you. How did you end up working on MLP? Um, well, it's kind of crazy. Just like Sam, I had an audition. <laughs> that <laughs> they were, uh, actually, no, actually, I was actually one of the lucky ones on this one. Um, uh, the director on it, um, Terry Klassen, um, you know, he's worked with us forever. I mean, he, he actually was the voice director um, on The Edge with us as well. Um, and so they were looking for this character, Soren, who, as you know, right, he's an extreme athlete pony, right? And uh, I had literally just come back from running around North America. Um, and so when the sort of like the, you know, the specs of the character came up, you know, and also his attitude and his, you know, his, his sort of, you know, his positive energy and this and that, um, Terry told me that when they, you know, when they first said the, you know, the name Soren in the description, they just, everybody just went like, oh my God, Matt, hello, he has to play this character. So, um, I, I was lucky in that respect that, um, they just called me into, you know, to come in and do a guest part, um, on it. And same as Sam, I had no idea the, you know, phenomenal hugeness of the show and, you know, um, and, you know, and then especially with, um, with my character, you know, just saying, you saved my pie, you know, that it would become a, such a fan favorite. And then before I knew it, you know, it's just like, oh, do you want to come to this convention? It's fully My Little Pony, but, you know, they love your character. Because at first I thought, are they talking about the right guy? You know, I've only yeah. done a couple episodes, right? <laughs> and and uh, they're like, oh, no, 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 that's the one, you know. And, um, and so God bless you, Pony fans. Pony Nation are just, like, an amazing group of people. So... Um, thank you for welcoming, um, you know, me uh, into the into the nation, the posse, the club. Um, everybody that I've met has just been nothing short of stellar, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, stellar. like you said, it's, yeah, it is. It's true, stellar. though. It's like we get, you know, it's another, it's another way, I believe, that we get to receive the gift of um, meeting the very people or, who are the reason why we're also getting to do the work that we do, Right. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a win all around. You know, it's it's cool, man. And so, believe and believe me, you you are 
you aren't kidding either. Sorin, he only really said those lines, and his popularity exploded like after immediately after that episode. It was yeah. it was yeah. crazy. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. Yeah. So is she. It's all about the food, right? Absolutely. It's all about the food. Yeah, it's fantastic. So everybody, have some pie. <laughs> now, uh, Sam, is there anything that yeah. made Flim uh, and Flam? Uh, you did Flim, I believe, right? Yeah, Flim. All right, Flim. Uh, is there anything that <laughs> made him stand out, particularly from any other characters you've done? Aside from, uh, I would think, that singing role? You know what? Actually, I want to get into that. Uh, that was a singing yeah, yeah. role. How how often does that happen to you? Um, well, uh, I had pre- my previous singing experience had been on, um, w- well, on a couple of shows I'd done little things, but the, the, my first time that I actually did regular singing for an animated series was Sonic Underground uh, back in the day. I. Oh, man. Uh, Khalil Jaleel, what's his name? Khalil Jaleel White? The guy, the guy, anyway. Horrible. The guy, he, 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 no, he, he was Urkel, anyway, on that show. He played, the, he played, he played the voice of Sonic. Urkel, sorry. But for whatever reason, he wasn't able to do the singing for Sonic. Say his name again, say his name again. Khalil Jaleel. Isn't Khalil Jaleel White? Am I wrong? I'm, I'm being, not. I don't know. Anyway, I just Urkel. I'm trying to pronounce that later. Yeah. yeah. Anywho. Um, <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> I, uh, I did the singing uh, voice for Sonic the Hedgehog on the series Sonic Underground. And every episode there was a song that the band played, and I played. I did the, I did the singing. So I got some experience doing that. So I uh, so when this came along, I was you know I kind of had I was familiar with doing you know some singing for animation. Uh, but the the thing about the that character, which made it unique, was the fact that it was kind of a stylized period of time that these guys were supposed to be from, like, you know, that vaudevillian kind of feel to their the way they, they spoke and, and the, the way the song was. It was fun. It was a lot of fun to get a chance to do a song that was in that genre and that kind of, that kind of feel to it. It was, it was a lot of fun and a challenge to try and do that. So it was great, though. I had a lot of fun doing the song. And now I, I and I'm currently also on uh, Littlest Pet Shop. I play Russell Ferguson, the Hedgehog, and we do songs on that. Yeah, so we do shows. We do shows. Uh, we do songs time to time on that. We actually had an Emmy-nominated song from the first season um, that was about. I can't remember the title of the song now. People will know. They're probably screaming at me, going, "It's this! It's this!" But basically, it was a ba- it was basically a song about the boys, and we're talking what it's like to be a boys, and you know, it was like uh, Sunil and and Vinny and and Russell were singing the song, and it got nominated for an Emmy, a daytime Emmy. So that was pretty cool. Wow, that is really so, cool. Yeah, yeah. So it was fun. So yeah, Flynn was just a fun character to do because of the style of of character, and and I had a really fun fun time doing the back-and-forth dialogue with Scott, because Scott was great to play off of as my brother. So, it was fun. Flim, Flim had kind of a... He wasn't really so much a jerk. He was he was a businessman, I, I suppose. Uh, though the personality kind of had him portrayed as more of a jerk. What was it like to kind of... to voice a mindset like that? Someone who wasn't really supposed to be nice to anyone, just more of a business person. Uh, well, um, just play himself. Just well, really, just play know. himself. Yeah, I just play myself. Whatever. I, you know. I don't know. It was fun. I mean, I liked, uh, <laughs> I liked the, I liked the way Flim and Flam worked together to manipulate um, the the ponies and, and my, my whole, my, the, the fun thing about, I mean, yeah, I don't see, he wasn't, you can say he wasn't a jerk. No, not, not outright jerk like, let's say, uh, um, Mareka's character as the Griffin was, where <laughs> she was just a mean, mean, yeah, you know. Gilda. Gilda. Gilda was an outright right jerk. You yeah. know, she just was just pretty much mean. Um, but it was the way that they, they, they managed to convince and entice uh, Granny Smith to, to actually take them up on their bet you know it was like they kind of almost made it so she couldn't back out of the bet and i like i always tell people my favorite line from flim 
was when he goes, which is kind of the 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 straw that breaks the pony's back, so to speak. But and when she, sh- ah, thank you. Uh, he he goes, he goes. Uh, what's the matter, Granny? Chicken. And uh, when he when he said that point, she was like, "What? What? What did you call me?" You know, that kind of like sent her over the edge. So it was more more just playing the guy who you know who knows how to manipulate situations, right? They're hucksters, so. Um, yeah, that was fun. That was Absolutely. Fun. Those are some of my favorite characters, the characters that can manipulate people just by saying the right thing. I, I always <laughs> exactly. Like now, yeah. Kind of like a good car commercial. Yeah. Now, let's get back to Soren real quick. Now, Matt, what do you think uh, about Soren? Uh, you told me that you got kind of a little synopsis on who he was supposed to be, uh, and I know he didn't really get too heavy of a presence, but what... What was it like voicing someone like him? Someone who is, as you said, kind of a very positive energy, but a little uh, silly. Yeah. Well, like, it was totally against character for me, because I'm pretty low energy. I don't really like people that much, um, <laughs> as I think Sam can attest to. Yeah. Um, He's a real downer. I'm a downer. I mean, people really, you know, they've been... People have been really praying for this for me for a long time, especially the fans. So thank you, thank you, fans, for you know finally throwing it over the edge for Matty Hill, and you know I finally got a part that you know um, matches. No, I'm just kidding. It's like it. This I guess in a way, I don't know what you want to call it. You know when you're just kind of meant to play a certain character. Um, it, it it's like you know I believe it's kind of like why you know me and me and Sammy ended up getting you know Ed and Double D right. It's the same thing. You know, with with Soren, um, even when I read the script the first time, and you know, and then I read the description of you know who he is, I was just like, hey, that sounds like me. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's uh, you no, know, so it's fun to play that, right? It's uh, you know, because you can't get any more truer than yourself. Oh, there's a metaphor in there. <laughs> Be yourself, kids. Everyone else. It's um, yeah, it's a good thing. It's it's really it's really fun to play. That's what I think is so awesome. You know, and then, and like I was saying earlier, to now be welcomed into like the you know the Brony Nation, you know, especially at like My Little Pony conventions, and you know, because it's kind of it's. I think that's why you know I'm gonna say Hasbro. I think finally went like, oh wow, these guys are onto something. That it's not just a bunch of people that just decide you know because they're fanatic about a show. I think it's what it represents. You know, and the more I get to know about sort of like the depth of the um, of the writing and how, you know, how well the characters have been fleshed out, right? And, you know, the, the insight and forethought that's gone into putting all this stuff together, you know, I mean, it's uh, like I, I found a little bit of um, cool information. Um, apparently, Soren was named and written, um, I believe, I, know I'm, I apologize if I'm t- a little incorrect in a couple of these areas, but apparently... It was. It's either the writer or the one of the creators. Um, it was after their son, um, who I believe might have like a learning disability or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and so I and oh, what was it? I'm, I wish I would know that correctly. Correctly. So don't take everything I'm saying as you know that's the gospel or whatever. But um, I know that Soren was written and named after somebody that I think was either the writer or one of the creators was, um, you know, it was it was one of their children, right? And so I thought, okay, that's really cool, you know, to have something that's obviously really, really close to somebody else's heart in their life, right? Yeah. Kind of, you know, for me, it brings it all back home to, like, <clears throat> these magic experiences that I get to have now meeting the fans who are really, you know, say, like, you suit, dude, you don't know how much this character's impacted me over this many years, or, you know, this character helped me get through high school, or this character helped me get through my, you know, my, my parents, you know, um, you know, one of them was sick for a long time, you know, and, and, and time and time again, I'm sort of left with this feeling of like, wow, I feel so grateful to get to do what we do, right? You know, it's because I used to just think for so many years, it, like what a great way to make a, a paycheck, and and we had so much fun. And as actors, we're so happy always when we're working, right? <clears throat> but I never thought sort of beyond that. I didn't really realize how much all of our cartoon work was, you know, deeply impacting people. Yeah. You know, and thankfully, so many positive ways. 
right? So Absolutely. keep them coming. It's, <laughs> it's a, it's you know what? That's that's a really great answer. It's a very appreciable answer. You you have to. You, I mean, you probably realize that it's, considering uh, what kind of a fandom this is, most people uh, would look at it from the outside and think it's really, really odd and probably extremely creepy, which well, is understandable. I, absolutely. You know what? And it, I guess it's like anything. You know, you take a day at the beach, there's always going to be one person that's kind of like the leerer. You know what I mean? Of course. But there's 99,000 people there that are awesome and amazing, and I think it's the same thing. With, you know, and again, it would be really easy, it's always easy to single out a group of people that you might, because you don't understand, or you might think like, okay, that's really weird. And so you just sort of like go, okay, blanket, weirdo, right? Um, yeah. Whereas, like, I think, again, that's been part of the gift of sort of being voice actors for so long that's allowed us to go and appear at, at a lot of these events and, you know, truly get to have these really cool experiences and interactions with the very people who are watching the shows beyond like oh you're really great in that oh thank you very much you know what i mean yeah. it's um, you know it's sam what do you have a good something sorry, were, to you, say? were you saying something i uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he always, no, what, uh, he always does that what he said he does yeah that's not, no that's nice though that's uh, the people the viewers i'm sure really really appreciate that sentiment that's in minute exa- ex- yeah. especially from from the voice yeah, actors yeah. themselves. That's really great to hear. Yeah, no, it's true. It's like it's you know, it's it's a really like yeah, it's a cool thing. I mean, I got a, I I was pretty lucky. Um, a few years ago, I did a run around North America, um, which took about a year to do. And in that, we talked to about oh my gosh, we did about two hundred and sixty school presentations. And it wasn't until we were partway through that tour that I kept realizing the impact that the, just like in this case for me, it was, you know, for Ed, Ed, and Eddie and for playing Raphael in the Ninja Turtles, um, that, because MLP hadn't, hadn't come out yet, like I, you know, hadn't been part of that yet. Of course. But it was like continually, like, like thousands of kids at each of these events that we went to at schools that as soon as, you know, you know, we'd ask them, you know, who wants to save the planet with Ed, you know, and all these kids are like, oh my God, and you know grown adults you know tearing because they're like oh my god ninja turtles man Raphael, dude you know you, you you were part of my childhood and so for me it was again it was that first light bulb moment every day realizing oh my god it, it it's it goes beyond just sort of like wow hey you did a great job you know what i mean it's more yeah. you like you realize that your job is actually impacting people's lives that's and, you know I, I myself, I you know, I have to for the sake of the interview, I have to. I'm supposed to be completely professional, but I am certainly in that. I have some of my fondest memories are of watching Ed, Ed, and Eddie, and I was a little heartbroken when that movie came out because that was the end. That was the end of all of Ed, Ed, and Eddie for us, and we were so yeah. happy but so upset. Yeah, yeah, there were. Plenty of people who had shared the same sentiment. They wanted it to keep going, and uh, yeah. unfortunately, all good things must come to an end at yeah. some point. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I, I think a lot of people don't think My Little Pony will ever end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you never know. One day. Yeah. Right. One day. One day. <laughs> but we, all, part we all like to be a part of something. Part of, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, unless you're the Simpsons, which seems will never die. Yeah. Um, <laughs> tell you know. I think they'd be cryogenically frozen, though. I think yeah. that's what it is. It's... Part of it is it's encapsulated too into this, uh, uh, you know, amount of episodes now that is, you know, you can go back and watch if you want, and it's kind of it's kind of in that yeah. place where it's frozen in time now as this part of your childhood. Is or, that called syndication? <laughs> syndication. I think it's syndication. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but yeah. it's it, it was a you know it's it yeah. was a great show to work on, and, and I love I love being a part of people's. Uh, Memories and and childhood experience. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it's kind of cool thing. No, absolutely, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great um, to have you on here right now and just hear your words about it. I mean, I know the chat is they're 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 fantastic. They're like going nuts about the entire thing already. Well, even... that's cool. Um, since I I'm under some time constraints, like maybe another fifteen minutes. No so problem. do you have do you have any questions for from like 
from your listeners that you need to ask us, or is it, or is it just all you're just conducting the interview? I just was wondering if there's a portion of this that you need to, you have questions coming in at all. Uh, there are. I have uh, one of our representatives on the show uh, gathering them. We're gonna okay. let. We're just gonna answer. Ask one more question from yep. the um, questionnaire, and then we're gonna get to them very quickly. Okay. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Then. Okay, so uh, my next question is just deviating from the voice acting for uh, a short time, and I know that you guys have done, uh, I'm not sure exactly how much, but I know there were some live-action roles that you uh, have both played, uh, one of my favorite being, if now correct me if I'm wrong, pretty sure this was you, Matt in Shanghai Nights as the yes. beginning with the book. Yeah, that is me. Yeah. I uh, loved yeah. that was so <laughs> funny to me when I yeah. learned that was you. That was uh, well, cool, man. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, to to be able to like literally, you know, go go, you know, toe to toe with a screen legend like Jackie, man. That was, um, you know, I I was, it was neat because all of a sudden I was realizing I'm like I'm having fun playing and acting with you know a guy that I've looked up to for so many years and you know who's you know quite honestly he's probably one of the most well-known people around the planet you know and um and then also then even in the short time that we got to work together hearing from other people you know of his huge philanthropy and his you know the way that he gives back to the fans and to you know just for having such a great life as well you know it's um it was it was cool it felt like you know I felt quite honored and I think as an actor getting you know it's the director is always the one that's always going to go oh hey good god good job good job unless they're firing you you know what i mean of course um, of course but i i, I thought it was kind of neat that when it when a crew member comes up to you that really has no reason to 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 say it cuz it's not their job or whatever um but i remember one of the grips who's this grizzly guy and you know and all this you could tell he worked on the trucks and all that and i uh, he he came up he you know tapped me on the shoulder on the last day and and, uh, you know, I turned around and he goes, hey, I just wanted to say you were awesome and you did such a great job. You went toe-to-toe with a screen legend. Do you realize that? Hey, and I was like, well, thanks. You know, it was, uh, you. It was really cool, you know, because all of a sudden I realized, what? Uh, and, and he didn't have to. So I thought that was, that was kind of cool. Absolutely. Now, yeah. Now, Sam, uh, what about you? I believe you played a role in something called Target Man. Target? Something human, from... human Target. Human, excuse human? Me, human Target. Were you yeah. the Target Man? I was, target? I, was, I was the bullseye. Sam's the Target no, Man? No, uh, ah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Excuse that, me, Human Target. You were awesome as that Target. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was, yeah, I mean, that was, I did that maybe three or four years ago. It was just a small part in a uh, series. And there I, are no small parts. Well, well, whatever. Yeah. Only... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did more. I did more on camera work back in my early twenties. I was, uh, I, I did quite well. Uh, I just, I just started transitioning. I mean, if you go to IMDb and you look yeah. up Sam Vincent, you can see some of the credits. Sam there. was the town doctor in in um, that. We <laughs> shot it. We shot a show called Lonesome Dove Lonesome series Dove. in the Calgary, well, outside of Calgary, Bragg Creek. Right. That's probably where we shot. That's where we Jackie shot. Chan. Yeah, mm-hmm. Shanghai Nights. Yeah. So and I saw Sam had etched his name yeah. and like yeah, Sam. It said the doctor. Really? Sam, Sam was here. No. <laughs> Sam was here. Yeah. I didn't do that. Um, <laughs> oh, but I I, <laughs> yeah, I've done some on-camera stuff. Um, and you know, back in the day, I got to work with some cool people. And yep. I did a particular episode of Outer Limits with Brent Spiner, which was kind of funky. Cool, man. That. that was fun. And I worked with Amanda Plummer on Outer Limits and. You know, worked with other actors, and it's been fun. But uh, yep. now, primarily, I'm a I'm a voice guy, and that's what I and love you're a producer to do. too now. Uh, yeah. yeah, working on that. It's working on it too. So, producer. Yeah. All right. Well, great. Now, why don't we use the last few minutes we have to? Uh oh. <laughs> <Uh-oh. laughs> I, I don't know what this man is doing, but he's. I know. So much. Sorry. Don't so, so why don't we step into the viewer chat questions real quick, as this man is terrifying me on cam. Uh, and man, just look at this guy. Look at this guy. He's, what a face. What, only a mother could love. Put your new spin on, I got my eye on you. Yeah, right? Okay, go on. Sorry, okay. go on. Sorry. Okay, Bam. so then. Now the chat has a few questions, and I think one of the most important that they've asked is, um, how do you keep your throats or your voices 
healthy, what have you done or have had to do when, you know, the inevitable sickness comes along or even just a sore throat that just happens to screw up that one voice you need? Uh, well, first of all, we try our darndest not to get sick because, you know, especially for hitting those high pitched voices, once you once your mm. once your nasal passages are inflamed and swollen and red, you're pretty much toast. Yeah. Um so it's great for those low deep voices, but uh, yeah. Yeah. absolutely, it's Unfor my favorite thing. And yeah, you know, unfortunately, uh, yeah. most of the stuff I do is either teenagers or you know, so it doesn't come in handy to have a cold. Old guys. So basically, yeah. the minute you start feeling that tingle in the throat, you're doing everything you can to stop it. You know, whether yeah. whether it's your own concoction of uh, uh, you know uh, teas and this and that and honey and warm water and lemon or whatever, whatever gargling. Um, but, you know, in terms of just, like, maintenance of, the, of, of your instrument, so to speak, um, don't go to hockey games and scream your brains out when the Canucks are winning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, I've, I've almost, I've made that mistake a couple of times oh, where yeah. I'm, like, going to a Canucks game uh, and then it's like, oh, my goodness, day. maybe I shouldn't have, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have cheered so much oh, there. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and also part of it is technique of learning how to use your voice properly so you don't wear it out. Uh, too much. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes it's good, good old bona fide rest. Yeah. Make sure that you know. I mean, like like Sam said, we've been doing this for a long time. So you know, each person sort of has a, a tolerance level for what their what their voice can kind of handle, right? Um, and uh, you know, um, it's it hasn't been for me up until really just recently, like this year, that um, I finally adopted drinking tea in my sessions or warm water. Because I just found that it really, really helped with um, just just my resonance and all that, you know. Whereas before, yeah, yeah. it would just be eighteen cups of this beautiful, beautiful coffee, you know, and and uh, <laughs> that's all I need. Put more milk in. <laughs> the, the, chat, the chat is uh, the chat is loving this. They is it on fire? Actually got, you've actually got one one commenter that says Matt looks like Neil Patrick Harris. Oh wow! Wow! Guy. What, are, hey, what do I look like? Thanks a lot. Wow, so you freaked them out when you you look like God. Well now you we got like, you doing that and his <laughs> eyes are all black. You look like that guy in that um Dr. Seuss movie. Sorry. <laughs> You're gonna get some comments on that. Yeah, he looks like, yeah I know, we got he totally does. So oh, god. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You want to see my tongue? Uh, so, so, get, so getting back, um, uh, now okay. let's see, what's another one we have here? <laughs> what would you say your favorite convention experience has been uh, with the fans? Oh, that one, you know that one? Um, that one okay, that, well I'm going to, this that. is my personal favorite, personal, was the fact that when we got to go to Las Vegas, now there was a whole, you know, fiasco about the finances surrounding that. But I had a good time at that convention, <laughs> Vegas. I mean, you get to go to Vegas? Vegas. That was awesome. Vegas. Um, but aside from that one... Favorite convention? Um, hmm. That's interesting. I, did you enjoy... Oh, you you, went, you didn't go to Comic-Con for Ed's that no. back in the day. You no, know? we were running. Yeah. Um, so um, I don't know. Yeah, I've been to a bunch. And, you know, and, and, and without sounding cheesy, like, I, I kind of... I enjoy... All of them, you know. Um, I think if I've not enjoyed it, it's either because it kind of just wasn't organized um, in terms of... Because when I say yes to going somewhere, I know what I set for myself to be able to go, okay, I want to I meet people. And I'm so I'm taking, you know, essentially four days out of my schedule that I could be here with my loved ones and... and um, and so for me, I take it, you know, I take it seriously of, and going like, okay, if if I'm going to come, put me in. Like, I want to, I want to meet people and I want to be part of, you know, say, uh, uh, you know, panels and stuff. And, you know, um, if, so those that put those together that, you know, that we're involved in and we get to do things for me, it's a lot more satisfying because, you know, we just, we get the full, you know, the full fan experience and stuff. So it's, yeah, it's good that way. Yeah. Yeah, we have, a, we have a few people in the chats, and even me, who have had to do some convention organization. So we we know what it feels like to have to be a part of ones that are poorly organized. Mm. Yeah, so, cause just it just kind of it kind of leaves a yeah exactly. You think like oh, it didn't need to be that way. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, All right. 
We yeah. probably only have time for uh, one or two more, and I guess I do have to ask this for the sake of these chatters. Uh, cupcakes or muffins? Cupcakes or muffins? This cupcakes is a big muffins. question. Wow. Well, um, I'm going to go Ooh. with muffins with uh, icing on them. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Did I did I did I skirt that? Yeah, the chat's going like yeah. you can't do that. You can't put icing on muffins. I don't know. Actually, no. You know what? I'm gonna be honest with you. Wow. Um. Yeah. See, he knows it. I yeah. If I if if I was like, can you say slut on your radio show? Yeah. What? Yeah. No, we can. She's a slut. I am. I'm a cupcake. He is, man. We take your we should take your we should take the computer over to Sam's. Cupcake cupboard. Cup- cupcake. Cup- cupcake. What meat. about you? Whatever, man. Whatever. You're We're a muffin guy. Me. I'm a muffin guy. I like. I like. Uh, I, how do I put this? I like. I'm like Soren. You know. I like. I like simple, yummy, really awesome tasting stuff. So it is true. I love fresh apple pie in the summertime with like a nice, of uh, of vanilla ice cream. <gasps> And I love all kinds of berry pie. Love them. Um, but I, I'm, but muffins or, or cupcakes, I'm totally the kitchen sink muffin man. Yeah, muffin right. Maddie. I'm feeling it. All right. It's, muffin Maddie. That's, but I put all sorts of healthy stuff in my muffins. They, this, the chat loved but, those answers way too much. Now, good. last now last question. It's definitely a fan favorite, so very well, guys. If you have... If you have any that you can name, what would you say are some of your favorite line sets from Ed, Ed, and Eddie? Sam Vincent! Oh, sorry. Lines? Shoot. Yeah. Favorite, favorite oh. lines? Oh, oh, man. There were... Oh! oh. See, our brains don't work that well, but... I am such a good boy! Oh! Milk and gravy cakes for Santa! <laughs> One of my all-time... Oh, am I... Pro- yeah. Kick my feet! Kick my feet! Kick my feet! <laughs> yeah. I see. I'm probably paraphrasing on this, but it would be something like, <laughs> "Ed, you are invading my personal space. Please step away." Hello, buddy. Thank you. Hello, buddy. I don't know. Yeah. We're just freaking out. <laughs> Ed, get your chickens out of my house. The chat is going berserk. You have no <laughs> idea how happy you just made them. Oh, uh, we had some. We had some good one-liners, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, it was like, oh, why? Well, yeah, I mean, there's zombies. Oh my god. Yeah. Everything. Man. Sure. Butter toast. Like, I gotta, I gotta go out, back. Man. I gotta it's watch like, all the episodes. Yeah, again. we're gonna go. You know what? We're gonna. When you let us go, we're, we're gonna just, go watch yeah. all the episodes. In fact, you know what? Let's just go. Yeah. Let's just go. <laughs> right. Well, edit, edit on. Well then, thank you both so much, Matt Hill, <laughs> Sam Vincent. What, looks like right now? what was it? Chatter line going like this. Is that what it looks like? Is like everybody it's, going like. It's, it's a chat window that scrolls up, and I can't keep up with it. It won't. Oh, yeah. That's okay. Okay, okay watch this. Watch this. Hi, chat. Hi, chat. Uh, hi, chat. Hello, chat. Um, Ed. Hello, chitter, chatter. Ed. Oh, yeah. Ed, chat is not a person. Oh. Why are you doing this? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. He's not a person. Hello, chat. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got to do this. Hold on one second. Okay. Hello, Hello, one second. Hello oh, chat. Oh, man, he's getting something. What is he doing? He's getting to go get his cupcakes. <laughs> you had to ask, didn't you? I... You had to ask. I, I did. Oh, boy. Oh, no, no. The chat asked, didn't they? Mm, they sure did. Yeah. Okay, chat. Wait, wait, wait. Are you ready for this? A very special fan. Oh, here it comes. Very special fan. Are you guys ready for this? Sent me in the mail. Okay. My own double D hat. There's a double D hat. No. But it's, it's from yeah. Elf, it looks like. <laughs> wait. No. Wait. the side. There it is. Wait, so I have to. Right. All right. I'm getting there. Right. <laughs> Ed, <gasps> now say, Hello. Um, okay, Sammy, yes. let us say goodbye and Feliz Navidad and Happy Thanksgiving all in one thing oh. for everybody. All right, okay? Ed. Okay. Um, okay. Feliz Navidad. Uh, Feliz Navidad. And, um, Merry Christmas, and, everyone, and, and, and Happy Hanukkah. And Hanukkah. And don't forget Mary Kawanza. And Mary Kawanza. Yes. Who is Mary Kawanza? Oh, she's a very nice lady. Oh, I like her. She, she looks. Ed! Sorry. You're invading my personal space. Sorry. Please. Happy Remembrance Thank Day, you. too, everybody. Bye-bye. Okay. Goodbye, bye bye. Don't Thank forget um, gravy and um, gravy cakes um, and milk, okay? Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you right. very much. Have a great day. Arriba Dirty. All right. Greetings and salutations. Goodbye. Hello.
Hi. Hello. <laughs> Peace out. Hello. <laughs>